Since arriving in the diocese just over a year ago, I've emphasised that my priorities are mission, 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 with apologies to Tony Blair. I've spoken at deaneries about the fact that you and I, as Christians, have the amazing privilege of participating in God's mission, which is nothing less than to reconcile the whole creation to himself in Christ. Mission, as the Archbishop of Canterbury expressed it, is about finding out what God is doing and joining in. That's why prayer and mission are so inextricably linked. It's by prayerful reflection that we'll be able to discern what God is up to and thereby join in. That's why I ask that this year's Diocesan Lent course, which I hope you might follow, should focus upon both the deepening of spirituality and the sharing of faith. The two belong together. And unless we seek constantly to deepen our faith, we shan't have anything of any worth to share with others. And nor shall we be able effectively to be the church for those who are not or are not yet our members. This year we enter Lent facing a more uncertain future than at any time for a generation. For some of us, the next few months will bring the loss of our jobs as the world faces an appallingly severe recession. And even those of us who are fortunate enough to have more secure jobs or pensions will nevertheless feel the breeze as the recession bites. My hope and prayer is that despite the pain that will be felt by a greater or lesser extent by everyone in our society, that good will come out of what's happening. Good will come of it if we are able, by what we say and what we are, to articulate a vision which will bring hope. Good will come of it if we're able to live and speak of values more enduring and deeper than the market, than that materialism to which our society has become addicted. People are looking to us, to the church, and there's an unprecedented opportunity. But words are of no use unless they're rooted in a relationship with the living God and we're living the life. During the year, it's been a great joy for me to see people throughout the diocese living the life and fulfilling their calling to proclaim the love of Christ in many and varied settings. That phrase, living the life, was the title of last year's memorable diocesan conference. And I was heartened both that so many people attended that conference and that a common commitment to deepening our faith and sharing it was expressed there and has been similarly expressed in many settings since. I was delighted that in committing itself to mission, the Bishop's Council at a recent meeting came up with three priorities. Renewing our relationship with God in prayer, renewing worship within our churches, and renewing our service to those outside them. Prayer, which is essentially relationship with God, must be the beginning and the end of this. And I hope that we shall all renew our commitment to it this Lent. Lent's a time for taking stock, for looking at our lives. How much are they focused on Christ? I've been haunted in the past few months by someone telling me of a confirmation sermon uh, not in this diocese, I'm pleased to say, in which the bishop took at, his, took at his text, I preach not myself, but Christ crucified. My informant told me that by the end of the sermon, he knew a great deal about the bishop's CV, but precious little more about Christ crucified. May that not be so with any of us. My prayer for us is that just as it was said of Jesus, what sort of man is this? It will be said of us, his followers, what sort of people are they? Their gracious actions and lives and the language on their lips is of God's goodness and love. Let's get to know them. There's something wonderful about them. It was people like that who drew me to the Christian faith and it's still going on all over the world. A missionary friend in Malawi told me a few months back of the manner in which she'd taken two boys from the school at which she teaches, one a Christian and one a Muslim, to an imam who was visiting the school to ask 
whether some of the financial support he was distributing might be made available to them. The Imam explained that it would only be possible for him to support the Muslim. A little while later, the Muslim boy and his brother appeared on my friend's doorstep, saying that they wanted to become Christians. Why? Because in the name of the God she served, this Christian missionary helped everyone, not just Christians, whereas the Imam would help only Muslims. Those two boys are now alive with the Christian faith. I hope and pray that Christ may similarly be alive in us and proclaimed through us. St Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthians, tells us that we should be ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. May our relationship with the living God in Christ be so deepened that God may make his appeal through everything that we say, everything that we do, and everything that we are. And may God bless you richly in your Christian life and witness this Lent and always. Thank mm -hmm. you.